Indeed, it's another opportunity for us to come together and give God the praise on this evening. Again, we're not going to count numbers. It's God to count numbers. He makes numbers count. So I should just join in with the worship service. We won't be before you very long. But he said, where two or three of us are gathered together, touching the degree, and he said he'll be in the midst. So if you don't mind for a few minutes, just join in with the worship service. We still lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. incorruptible and undefiled and the fate is not away from preserves in heaven that is for you. Verse 5 says, who are kept by the power of God through faith and unto salvation be ready to last all time. Verse 9 in, in chapter 2 says, but you are chosen generation, you are royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praise of him who had called you out of darkness into this marvelous light. I read for you verses 3 through 5 of the first book of Peter. And in chapter 2 of Peter, verses 9, I ask God to bless the reading, the hearers, and the doers of his holy and righteous word. Amen. Amen. Amen.
members and missionaries and evangelists in the house. Amen. Amen. My family, I do likewise for you. Amen. Now you turn it over to the food field. Amen. 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 Stand for our response to read. Amen. <clears throat> Comes out of Psalms 23 and reads, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He make me to lie down in green pastures. He make me to lie down in green pastures. He lead me beside the still waters. He lead me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He restores my soul. <clears throat> he leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, Yea. though I walk through the valley in the shadow of death. Though I walk through the valley in the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. For thou art with me. The rod and thy staff they comfort me. The rod and thy staff they comfort me. Thou prayest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou prayest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anoint my head with oil. Thou anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over. My cup runneth over. Surely, Surely goodness, goodness and, mercy and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Forever. Amen. Amen. May be seated. Let's have some church.
I believe everybody in the house can testify. Hallelujah, that your worship, your worship is for real. It's unto God Almighty. Hallelujah. We give him all the praise and all the glory on tonight. Another uh, fourth Wednesday night where we can just come and celebrate the Lord and lift him up. Hallelujah. We give all praise and honor to God, to our pastor, Pastor Charlie Hall Jr., Amen. hallelujah, to all the ministers and uh, evangelists in the house today, we just praise God for this opportunity. We got a beautiful woman of God that is coming up with in a minute um, to give us a word of what the Lord has placed in her heart, and she just want to express that to each and every one of us. And Are y'all ready? Are you ready? Without any further ado, we would just like to thank God for Evangelist Dennis for allowing the Lord to use her on tonight. Will y'all please stand with me? Amen. And if y'all could just point your right hand to Evangelist Dennis and just tell Evangelist Dennis, let the Lord use you. 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 In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I've been through. 
I don't know your story, but I know mine. Amen. I've been through and still going through. Amen. But as long as God with me, I can make it. Amen. I made it this far. Yes. I'm truly thankful, thankful for this opportunity to share what God has put in my heart and mine with all who's at present tonight. I want to thank the congregation for coming. Amen. I want to thank God for all the ministers, messages from the ministers that have gone before me. Amen. I pray that the messages have helped someone in a much needed way. Amen. I am Evangelist Annie Dennis for those who might not know me. And Evangelist announces the good news about Jesus Christ. Such as Timothy 4 and 5. Third form is usually translated as preach the gospel. Luke 1 and 19. A special gift. Ephesians 4 and 11. I was a certified Christian counselor. Where no counsel is, people follow. But in the multitude of counselors, counselors there is safety. Proverbs 11 and 14. I want everybody that can to stand as I read these few verses that my message is coming out of. That will be coming out of John 4. Your Bible might not have a different kind of Bible, really. It might not set up as well like mine. And these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. This and then is a message which we have heard him and declaring to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie. And do and the truth do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleans us from all sin. And my subject will be, it's time for a spiritual checkup. It's time for a spiritual checkup to check the path that we are walking in. Whether we're truly walking in the spiritual light with God, or whether we are walking spiritual darkness with Satan. Check yourself. It's time. We're living in the last days. And if we don't check ourselves, see what rock we're going with? We're in trouble. Amen. We're in trouble. I'm going to give you a definition for the light coming out of a regular dictionary. A form of energy that acts on the eyes so that one can see. Can be a candle, a lamp, flame, a spark, to start something burning. Darkness have little or no light, that's the definition. Spiritual, that definition for spiritual light. Spiritual awareness and right living, the characteristic of God. For he is the light of the world, and in him no darkness. There's no darkness, not a bit in Jesus. So if we worship in spiritual darkness, we need to check ourselves. Check ourselves. You got people in the world and you got people. He said everybody that said, Lord, Lord, is not going to make it in. And we got people in the world and in the church serving in darkness, serving in spiritual darkness. Think they're on the right page? But they need to check themselves. You know, I'm going to give you a story. It's a little short story. Everybody can say, Lord, Lord that people know the word Jesus Christ. And they are working 
and walking in darkness. It said there was a man that started out of a bar. Okay? When he started out of the bar, two priests were walking by. He walked up to one, he said, Dude, I'm Jesus Christ. He said, No, son, you're not Jesus Christ. He walked up to the next priest. He said, Man, I'm Jesus Christ. He said, No, you're not Jesus Christ. He said, Follow me. I'll let you know I'm Jesus Christ. So he went back into the bar where he had been drinking. When he walked in, the bartender said, Jesus Christ, you're back again. You'll get that on your way home. <laughs> See, everybody that's say saved, not saved, but they know Jesus Christ. It's time to get real, people. Don't you see what's happening? But Matthew said, these things don't come to pass. Trouble, trouble, trouble all over the land. But he said to the believers, be not troubled, for all these things got to come to pass. This is just the beginning. He said, but time is not yet here. Stop walking in darkness. Stop walking in darkness. Stop walking in darkness. There are many kinds of lights. Okay? And Satan can fool you. He can fool you. He can bring a man or a woman into your life. Oh, she looks beautiful and holy. Holy. You get her, maybe a tornado. <laughs> then you're ready to get rid of her. So you got to check yourself. You should have discernment. That's right. Check, uh, check the spirit by the spirit. You got to have discernment. God will give it to you truly trust it. Okay, we got all kind of lights. Okay, we got street lights. We got home lights. We got car lights. Sometimes those will go out. They will go out. But God's light will never go out. Never go out. That's who we should choose instead of the spiritual darkness. It bothers me. When a person said, prayer changes things. Oh, they pray. They shout. They have a hallelujah good time. Prayer changes things. And you, they walk right out the door with an ugly spirit still. If prayer can change and you keep praying, you should walk out with a better spirit and ask God to take all of this junk out your heart. Your heart not right, God not going to listen to you. you Praying or whatever you call yourself doing in vain. My Lord, my Lord. In vain. He won't listen to you. He want a person with that worship for real. That love for him for real. Put no other God before him. No other God. This is serious business. It's time to start playing church. We are the church. We come into the building together. And we got people walking in darkness. You should come to church. Bible study. But, but they don't come in at all. That spiritual darkness. Not real. But they can go to the grocery store. Casino. Or to the doctor's office. Anywhere they want to go. But they go to church. And Sometimes I recognize why they do. I was counseling two young women two weeks ago, and I was trying to get them to come to church. One of them said, I'm not about to go to church. I said, why are you not? Those people act like me, they dress like me, and they do everything like me. Why do I go to church? Should I go to church? I told them, you don't go to church to look at the people. Come on. You go to listen at the word. And if you know the word, and the preacher's preaching the word, that's what you listen to. That'll uplift you, make things better in your life. But you gotta obey. You gotta practice what you preach. Practice what you pray. Try to be steadfast like Job. Job was an upright man. I love that story. He was an upright man, righteous man, perfect. 
but he wasn't perfect like Jesus, but he was perfect in trying to serve the Lord as best as he could. He neglected his wife, said so you talk like a foolish woman. He neglected his friends, but guess what we'll do? We'll go to these friends and they not fruitful. We'll listen to them before we read the Bible and study the Bible and get the right road and what we should do and shouldn't do. Read the word. And if you don't understand it, get with somebody that understands it better. And that's the new one is. You got a lot of people know jealousy is a revelation. But they still worship in darkness. In darkness. You got to really understand what the Lord said. But you got to have it in your heart too. You got to have the word in your heart and obedience. I'm here to tell you tonight, stop walking in darkness. It's not hard to walk in the marvelous light. Because Jesus, you, you can go in your room, your house, been there for years, and no lights. You're going to stumble. You're going to fall. Even though you've been in that home for a long time. You can drive in the darkness. You're going to have a wreck, run over somebody, and that's what will, will happen when you worship in darkness. You're going to stumble, you're going to fall, and you're going to believe in anything but Jesus. we got to make a change and get on the right road, the right path with the light. we got to do it. we got to do it. we got to do it in a hurry. Just today, tornado just ripped the whole whole area. They, they, I, when I was growing up, we didn't hear about all these tornadoes. But we got so much hate, envy, jealousy, non-forgiving. Pastor Mays both, you just rejoice my soul Wednesday night about forgiveness. You did a wonderful job about forgiving. And Pastor all March, I told him, I said, you're speaking some of what's going to be in my sermon. <laughs> and past Sunday, was a little more in there. And then I looked on his uh, message that he puts out, inspirational message, and that was a light. I said, this must be what I'm supposed to speak about. Amen. But we got to make a change. We got to determine which path we're going to travel on. Right. Well, we're going to travel in marvelous life with Jesus. Right. Spiritual darkness with Satan. Walking in spiritual darkness with Satan will influence evil spirits, ungodly thoughts. And God knows what you're thinking. So you can't even fool people, but you can't ever fool God. Right. Hatred. Pride, disobedience to the word of God. This is in spiritual darkness. Evil, weakness, weakness, do, uh, do give a heed to false lips. Enjoy gossip, lies. Proverbs 17, 4. Jealousy, open doors to demons. Very little love, brother and sisters. For brothers and sisters, only your, even yourself. If you don't love your brother and sister, you don't even love yourself. Wow. You don't love yourself. Wow. Resentment towards another. Taking advice from others who is not in the word. Unforgiveness. God forgave those who nailed him to the cross. They put thorns on his head. Things that we could imagine, we couldn't have we couldn't have stood none of that. Right. But what did he say? He said, forgive them, for he know not what they say, what they do. And we can't forgive each other, just roll our eyes at each other. And the, oh Lord, we need help today. We need help now and yet. Make a change, Lord Jesus, in our hearts and minds. Spiritual darkness will lead to destruction. 
we should not have fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness. Psalm 1 said, do not sit in the seat with ungodly. Pray for them, but don't sit with them. Because you can be married, okay? You married for a while, you're going to pick up some of their traits. You're going to start acting like them, talking like them, or something. And if you talk, communicate and be friends with the ungodly, you're going to pick up some of that too. We got to watch who we communicate with, who we have connection with. We got to watch ourselves if we want to keep the path in the spiritual life, which is Jesus. You know, Sometimes we have headaches, heartaches, all kinds of aches. You know why some of that? We cause it ourselves. If we have a, a heavy weight on our hearts and minds, we make our own self sick. Yeah. What we have in our heart, and we got hate, envy, and all, that's weighing us down. That's when ungodly junk in our hearts and minds will weigh you down. And then we'll say, I gotta go to the doctor. My heart not be right. Shouldn't be right. You don't have the right stuff in it. Clean it up. Clean it up. Clean it up. Some might like this and some don't. But I know God loved it because he gave it to me. Amen. He gave me this message. If anyone think they're walking in the light and it's walking in darkness, check yourself. It's time to check yourself. Whether you're walking in spiritual darkness or spiritual light. And I hope everybody in here is walking in the spiritual light. Because trouble is all around us. God is offering his light to all of us. Right now. He's offering hope for whatever we need. Love, most important commandment, for he is love. He said, how can you love me that you've never seen before? And see your brothers and sisters every day. And cannot love them. Mm -hmm. If you say you love me, you're a liar. You're a liar. And the truth is not in you. He offers peace, even when trouble is in your life. Justice in a courtroom. Blessing and favor when we are less, least expected. Protection in this evil time and all the time. Wisdom and knowledge of his word. You got to read it. Strength and healing in body and mind. Joy in time of sorrow. Power. Power if we serve him in truth and spirit. Yeah. Forgiveness if we are willing to forgive. Eternal life living with God forever. Yeah. Whatever we need is in the light. Yeah. God's light. Yeah. I'm, at, I'm asking you today, don't let that spiritual darkness Rob you of your eternal life. Right. Eternal life is worth fighting for. We are in a spiritual warfare right now. Spirit against the enemy, against Satan, Lucifer. We are in a spiritual warfare. But I'm asking you today, stand. Fight, watch and pray. Don't let him rob you of your eternal life. It will pay off after a while. Job was steadfast. So was Daniel. Steadfast and many more. They kept the faith. And look at Daniel in the lion's den. He never gave up on God. Never gave up on God. And guess what? The lions didn't even know what was going on. They couldn't attack him. Job was told by his friend and his wife. Won't you curse God and die? He said, you talk like a foolish woman. That's what we all should say to these people that tell us wrong. You talk like foolish people. Foolish people. 
Yeah, eternal life is worth fighting for. It's time for a spiritual checkup. You can't get your spiritual checkup by going to St. Louis, Southeast Memorial, Ben Tom. They'll send you to these doctors. Can't get it from the doctors because some of them need a spiritual checkup. Mm -hmm. Can't get it. Can't get it. But oh, call on Dr. Jesus. Yeah. He got a prescription for everything. Yeah. This is his prescription. Thank you, Lord. This is his prescription. And anything you want to know is in this word. Thank you, Jesus. Just go to your index. Look for love is in there. It'll tell you all about it. Tell you all about it. This is his prescription. Doctor, I'll give you a prescription. It might be the, even the wrong medicine. All kind of side effects. All kind of side effects. And they'll give up on you. But God will never, ever give up on us. He went to that cross because he loved the sinners so well. He loved the sinners, all of us sinners. He said, those last sinners cast the first stone. We all sinners. But we should try to uplift each other. Help each other. Love on one another. It's time. We preach, we teach, we do everything. But love on one another. We'll walk by each other, won't even speak. What kind of love is that? The Lord is watching. He's watching all of our action. And we wonder why our blessings haven't come. I used to have this habit, let me tell you. I used to say, three strikes you out on me. I didn't bother nobody. But you come after me three times, I'm going to let you know. I'm going to let you know something. Might not be in the right way. But you know what? I've been praying. Praying for that to change. And you know what? It's changing. It's changing. All I do now is hold my hand and say, Jesus, Jesus. I give it to him. I give it to him. Because I know he knows how to fix it. And I'll fix it wrong like I had been. Had been. I thought about it. I said, three strikes you out. Don't the Lord tell me three right. blessings you out? Right. I don't want, I want all my blessings. Right. Everything I can get, I want it. And I have been blessed. Amen. Blessed. I'm standing up here. I don't know your story, but I have a story. I've taken care of six elderly people in my life. I had to bury them out of my pocket. I had a child, a husband, all that. Took out my mama, blind sister, right in the same house. I got people sitting right in here now can acknowledge to that. Two cameras. That's all I know. I bought a blind head and a sister. I'm taking care of both of them. Dress them up nice. Bring them in the church. Had a husband, a child, stepfather in the VA nursing home. I bowed from the job to them, then to the six people, my dad and stepfather. Oh, and guess what? I'm still here. Full of spirit. Never left the Lord. Don't ever plan to. That's why I can stand up and tell you what the Lord will do for you. If nobody told me what the Lord will do, I know what he'll do. He'll do it. He'll do it. And taking care of elderly people is not easy. Amen. It's not an easy job. But I took care of six. Some of them had insurance, some didn't. I pulled out my pocket. I had a husband then that could support me. Took care of them. So Sister Coleman took care of her mama. She never did. Took care of her mama. That's not no easy job. And I had a blind end. I had to dress her before I come to church. Put the wheelchair in the trunk of the car, right out there. Some of the guys knew. They'd meet me at the car. See, Jesus will send you somebody. They'd get the wheelchair out the car. I've been affiliated with this church over 30 years. Over 30 years. And sure have. So a lot of them that have been here a long time, they know. They know all about what I've gone through. Amen. 
We give up on God, but he'll never give up on us. Never ever. That's why we should serve him in spirit. And spirit. Spiritual. Spiritual. That's the light. He's the light of the world. He has souls. Man didn't hang the stars. And man didn't hang the moon. If he didn't do look and make the sun shine, if he did, we'd be in trouble. Oh, I'm not gonna put that light on her. I don't like her. I'm not gonna shine that moon on her. I don't like her. That's our attitude today. I don't like you, I don't like you, I don't whatever. God is watching us. God is watching us. It's time for a spiritual checkup. Check yourself. Check yourself. He's a healer. He's everything we need. Everything. It's time for a spiritual checkup. Walk in the light, not spiritual darkness. Not spiritual darkness. He is a prescription for everything right here. If you go to him in truth and spirit, don't let nobody fix your spirit. Turn your spirit. I won't. I don't care who do or what. If you're going to fix my spirit, I'm going to get away. I'm going to get away. I'm going to pray for you, but I'm going to get away from you. Because I want to see Jesus. We so, God, that's why God is angry. He letting you know. If he take his hand off of us, we will perish. We will perish. Everything going before him. The White House, school, can't do no prayers no more. Put him on the back burner. He's angry. He don't like that. Put him on the back burner. Oh, yeah. We're in trouble, y'all. We're in trouble. And if we don't do better, we don't. We don't. Get out of that spiritual darkness. It's not hard. Be steadfast. Walk in the light. And that goes from the front door to the pulpit. We should be shining our light every day. Watch how we act up here. The choir members is part of the pulpit. Watch how you act. Come decent and in order. Come decent and in order. God is watching us. What are we doing? Are we playing? Time is winding up. It's time to get it right. Time is winding up. We're in the last days. Some of us going to live to see the rest of it, some not. But when he come, I want to be ready. I want to be ready. I want to follow him. We walk in here any kind of way. That's why people say, why go to church? They look like us. They act like us. And those are one that's in darkness. We got to bring them out of that darkness by shining our light. Spiritual light. Spiritual light. Some wrong. Then we wonder why our blessings haven't come through. We got too much hate. <clears throat> too much envy. Too much evil in our hearts. Pray it out. Sing it out. Teach your children how to walk right. Now the children seem to be the parents and the parents the children. I was in Walmart about three weeks ago, and I wanted to get that little girl myself, but I said, hey, they beat me down in here, so I left her alone. I was about to get in. This little girl about six years old in the basket with her grandpa. Now this for real. And he said, sit down. She said, you shut up. You don't tell me what to do. Loud and clear. The grandma walked up and said, did your daddy say, your grandpa said, sit down. And she looked at the grandma and said, who asked you in this? I would have rolled her little honey up and tore it up in that basket. I told my son, I said, whenever I have to spank you and they come and get me, you going with me. I'm going to tell them, take you with me. Take, take you with me. I'm not going to stand for a child to be ungodly, but they're picking it up from their parents. I've heard so many parents 
in the line at Clovis, cursing their children loud and clear. What kind of teaching is that? What kind of teaching is that? It's sure not from God. And a man looked out on all that eyes. She said, what you looking for? You haven't heard nobody curse a child. Isn't that sad? We live in a sad world. Women don't cover themselves no more when they expect it. I've seen that. How's the top of the stomach open? Oh, our body's supposed to be sacred. Men and women, we are built in the image of God. It's supposed to be sacred. What are we doing? We're destroying ourselves. We're accepting whatever Satan got to offer. Whatever he got to offer. He, he worked with me all this week. Like I said, I told him, you don't know who you're messing with. Mm. Tried to get my voice all clouded up. I prayed, and I just walked on off in faith. Mm. I said, I know Jesus, you're with me. You're going to clear this up where I can pass the message to somebody, to help somebody, and at the same time help me. I'm not speaking for everybody. I'm not down in it because I need it to. We all need help from Jesus. We all got a problem. Spiritually, health-wise, whatever the problem is. Whatever. I used to go to the rehab, pray for my stepfather. I mean my stepbrother. And he just loved it. I had him quoting Philippians 4 and 13. He was quoting sick. Quote me. We don't visit the sick anymore. We're so busy. I need a big house. I need a big car. I need a this. I need a that. I need more money. And God has already supplied your needs. What are we going to do? We're going to leave here. I've never seen a hearse cat in the house. Never. Never. And look what's happening. All those big houses are being torn apart. He's showing them something. They've been torn apart. You don't accept what I've already given you. <clears throat> Trying to get bigger. That's why they had a heart attack walking, working three or four jobs. Trying to build it, keep these houses. Putting all of this in front of God. Won't go to church. Walk in their big house and take their money. That's what's wrong with the White House. Most of them filthy rich. Can't hardly walk and still trying to make that money. We got a problem all over the land, the world. When Jesus made, created heaven and earth, he said, it is good. Man have messed it up. And he's angry, truly, truly angry. We got to do better. From the front door to the poor pit, we got to do better. We got to come in with a light. People out there in the congregation is watching us. People out in the world watching us. And most importantly, God is watching us. We got to do better. We can't slip aside in the church. He said, come and decent and order. Decent and order. It doesn't pay. You don't have to go out and buy a $1,000 dress. $500 dress. I have bought a beautiful dress from Walmart. Believe it or not. Blouse, I, I shop carefully. Specials. A few things I paid a little more for because of what an engagement I'm going to. But you can dress up that beautiful blouse or that beautiful skirt that costs $10 and look like it's rich. But like we, we slip and slide in anything. Bring God the worst when he's giving you the best. He giving you life every day. We don't know when our last day. We don't know from the next to the next minute when we're going to still be on earth. That's why we got to make haste. Get it right. Work in the spiritual life. Walk in the spiritual life and not spiritual darkness.
Satan will fool you. He'll present all kind of beautiful stuff to you. If you're not <clears throat> with Jesus, you will accept anything in all things. It's time to get it right. I leave with you. It's time for a spiritual checkup. No time to waste. Check yourself. This goes for me as well. If I got to check and see if there's inside of me, something inside of me that God doesn't appreciate. None of us are perfect. If we were perfect, we would need Jesus. But we should be perfect and trying to do his will as best as we can. And his highest commandment is love. His first and best commandment is love. For he is love. He is love. I, I want one more thing. I went to, and people watching, you know, you can go in a place and if you look spiritual, even the young people, they look they half naked and they look at you funny. Because they know the difference. I was in Golden Corral, and I'm not perfect, but I try to let my light shine wherever I go. May 4th, sitting eating, a lady in her family walked in. She touched me on the shoulder. I said, what is going on here? She said, you're beautiful. And I said, I don't know her. Then they went and sit somewhere else. She came back, put her hand on my shoulder, you're beautiful. And she said, I'm an apostle. She gave me her name. And she said, I'm going to talk. I said, I'm an evangelist. We talk. But people see. That's a discernment. The spirit by the spirit. If you let your light shine, people see it. People would see it. And they also see things that's not right. Jesus is watching us. Jesus is watching us. And what hurts me bad, I don't care about people defending me. I it hurts to see them getting in bad shape with Jesus. Because when they defend you, they defending God. And it hurts my heart to see somebody act in spiritual darkness. Check yourself. Whether check and see whether you're walking in the path of the spiritual light, or whether you're walking in the path of spiritual darkness. I'll leave with you. Make a change. Check yourself. I'm glad to see my brother back there. Praise the Lord, we can do better than that. Yeah. We need to check ourselves. He say that we should uh, let our light shine before men that they may see the good works that he be glorified. So we just want to make sure that we are, as evangelist Dennis was saying on tonight, that we are letting our light shine at all times, not sometimes, but at all times. We thank her, truly thank her for this word on tonight. I pray that something was deposited in each one of our hearts that would help us to just continue to press on in the name of Jesus. And for those that, um, I know when she got up, she was rushing and a little nervous or whatever, but it was 1 John. 1 John, for those that, that needed to know 1 John, first chapter and the fifth verse for um, for, for those that um, just wanted to help out. Not correcting her, but I know we can get nervous and, you know, and, and stuff, and I just wanted y'all to know, because a lot of people do like to take notes, you know, so I just want y'all to know. The doors of the church is now open. Amen. Amen. There
there may be one on today that don't know Jesus and just want to come um, and accept the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. It's real, a real simple process. Just tell Jesus that you have sinned and you repent and that you want to confess that he is the Lord and Savior, the Son of God, and that you want to welcome him into your life. That's all you have to do. It's real simple. There may be someone that has kind of distanced themselves from God and just want that, that connection, that bond back again. Want to, um, as um, Evangelist Dennis was talking about tonight, want that light to be shining at all times. That's you. You can come. You can come. If there's anyone in the house that may need prayer on tonight, you can come. Now is the time to do it for Amen. This hour is to extend, to us to accept or reject. Amen. Amen. It's offering time. Praise the Lord. It's offering time. Let us give. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Under the stars again? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, We're having night. movie night. Yeah. Whether it's right. under the stars or under the, under this roof. Yeah. Well, we gonna we are having a movie and we have really been having a wonderful time with that fellowship, um, coming together and um, watching the movie and then being able to just discuss what you you know, what you have received. Um, through that movie and the but the fellowship and the food is awesome. Yeah, praise Amen. the Lord. <laughs> so it's, it's, that's next Friday, but there's no Bible study. Right, next right, Friday. right. So y'all, everybody got that? There is no Bible study on Wednesday because movie night is on Friday. There is no Bible study on Wednesday because movie night is on Friday. Do, please, yeah. they're gonna be texting, talking about oh, Pastor me, Pastor me, y'all ain't having no Bible study, okay? No, <laughs> amen, amen. Well, we thank God um, um, for each of you coming out today, and we really pray that God just bless y'all tremendously for your faithfulness, Pastor. Hall, you have anything else? All right. Well, we're gonna turn it back over to our speaker on tonight. Amen. 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 
Jesus, one of the name I pray. Amen. 